Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Hello, team. Welcome to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast, and our seventh Intel update. Just real, real quick, this week, Neil and I are at Gen Con. Likely, as I speak, I am in Indianapolis, Indiana, as I speak to you anyway. So we're actually not going to be doing a discussion episode this week. We're not going to be doing a review episode this week. We're going to do our Intel update. Uh, and then we do have a couple of other things that are going to be um, airing special. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But I am here with my co-host, Emily. How's it going, Emily? It's going good. Cool. Um, before we dive into uh, a bunch of stuff about Season 3, Comic-Con, and a bunch of other cool things that have been going on, what's up with you? I'm going back to school soon. Oh, this is, yes. Yeah, it's... We flip roles now. I, I had the summer that was super busy because my kids are off school, and now they're going to go back to school. Yes. So it's back to college, back to school, back to classes, and staying up late studying, and going to the library to research things and all of that, which is wonderful, but it's also also stressful. So it's been yeah. picking up various things for school and getting prepped for getting packed and all of that. Yeah. yeah. How far away is your college? It's Clark. Right? Yes, I go Clark to University. Clark University, and no one needs to know where I live. Um, <laughs> I just meant like yeah. you're a couple of hours yeah, away from I'm Clark, a, right? Or are you, about, are you longer like, than about that? About an hour and a half, two hours or so from home base to college. Oh, okay. So it's not gotcha. it's not crazy, but still it's a bit of a drive. Well, you become a podcast um personality <clears throat> recently. Sure. We'll we'll call it that. <laughs> That's what we'll go with. Well, you've already been on you guessed it on the fictional females podcast, right? That was how long ago was that? Like six weeks or eight weeks ago? Yeah. Maybe? I feel like month 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 or two. Months ago? Month or two. I feel like it was if back people in haven't June. checked that out, you should definitely go check that one yes, out. Yes, if you need more of me talking about Miss Martian in your lives, go, go <laughs> listen to that. It's not like I do it enough. <laughs> or here. just wait for the discussion episode that's coming up, because you have a discussion episode coming up, Yes, right? I believe it's going to be next week, because we don't have anything going up this week for discussion. Next that's week right. will be my all-female squad discussion episode with Cheyenne and Diana, where we talk about... Uh, representation of women on Young Justice and a little bit in comics in general because, you know, we branch out as we do on cool. discussion episodes. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, you've been invited on to another fantastic podcast as well. Yeah. Yes, I don't I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about that, if it's secret or not, but I'll go ahead. I don't know um, if it's I, yeah, do it. I got invited to come on and play Masks on She's a Super Geek, which is awesome and that I binged listened to in like two weeks and just plowed through all of it because it was amazing and then i got a message yeah. on twitter that was like hey you want to play masks with us i'm like yes <laughs> i mean yes i would enjoy that greatly <laughs> senda and the who i refer to now as the other emily uh <laughs> senda and senda's co-host emily are fantastic i've been on that podcast myself of the honor of uh playing a bit of Possibly lightly intoxicated Dungeons and Dragons, where we do some craziness. You can go check that out. Uh, I cannot wait to hear Emily and Senda in the same room playing together. <laughs> the giggling will be out of control. It's going to be fantastic. Just, just laugh at everything. It's going to be great. Oh, Senda. Loves, loves Senda. What about you, Rich? What's going on with you? What's up with me? Uh, it's been a little on the rough side <laughs> the last few weeks. Uh, in general, my life is pretty great, but we had a family member who's in, in the process of passing away this past week, so I was helping my family members locally here, and of course, that's my job as well, so um, both uh, this previous weekend and then the weekend before that were 16-hour work days back-to-back, -back and yeah, just not a lot of sleep. <laughs> my son, who's two, has decided that he wants to not have to wear any kind of pull up or anything at night. So he's getting up like six times a night to go potty and needs help. So I'm like, I salute your like industriousness. Also go to sleep. <laughs> so, but after Gen Con, my wife and kids all go back to school. My wife's a teacher. So she goes back to school just like you and the kids go back to their um, other school as well, which means that we've 
like I said earlier, we flip roles. So I'll be able to start doing a lot more work uh, at home. I won't be watching the kids as much and and going on family trips and all that, which is great, which also means that I can have time for some backlog material. Like, oh, I don't know, a certain secret <laughs> origin I keep not doing. You can start writing episode outlines again. <laughs> I know, right? I don't know. I got so used to you doing it. It's so fantastic. But also, uh, I've also in my other life back in, uh, meanwhile, back in role-playing game development land, I have been working off and on over the summer with two, uh, three fantastic designers on a game called Descent into Midnight. It's a Powered by the Apocalypse system, so it'll be familiar to the people who have heard our Masks game. It's not going to be the same mechanics. It's a similar mechanic, this idea of 2d6 plus a certain number, and then six or less, you fail forward, and seven to nine is something, and ten higher. But outside of that, most of it is is very different, which is I'm incredibly excited about. But if anybody's interested in that, you can find out more on Twitter at D-I-M-R-P-G. That's Dim RPG for Descent into Midnight. Or Taylor Labrash, one of my um, team, just set up our website. So it's www.descentintomidnight.com where I actually did a couple of playtests that were recorded, which were fantastic because I wasn't going to be able to be there. But this most recent one had one of the other designers, Richard uh, Kreutz Landry, and Darcy Ross, who was in our Masks game, actually blessed us with her presence, her marine biology knowledge, which was amazing, and are in on that game too, along with one of our now returning podcast or, uh, playtesters because she or they love the game. <laughs> like They love the game so much, they're like, I want to play this again. So That's great. I'm excited. So they're editing it up. The boys, uh, Richard and Taylor, are editing it up, and we'll have it up on that website pretty soon. And uh, people can come listen to the very early playtests of a game before it gets developed. That's great. And that's pretty much it, really. Oh, except for some other things we're going to talk about, like Gen Con coming up and stuff, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's talk about the... Comic Con. Yeah, you know those those little bit of season three details. We got not much, not anything really, except a lot of stuff. <laughs> except the most we've gotten so far. Used to be like, oh, we've got a title we can talk about. Now we're like, guys, there's so much. There's stuff now, and it was mostly just images. They couldn't talk about a whole lot of anything else. It was just Phil Barassa artwork, which had a lot of implications. So I went on Thursday and Friday. Some of our Patreon backers have may have listened to our uh, San Diego Comic-Con special with uh, Cam Bowen and Eric Lopez. That is going to become available to everyone this week, which is another one of the special things that you can listen to this week since we do not have a discussion or review episode. Um, But there was a lot going on. There was uh, some cool retrospective art on like some art pieces that they used to try and sell the series in the first place. The original concept art by Phil Brasa was pretty incredible Um, and they have some stuff posted online I think some YouTube stuff yeah some of the videos have gone up and one of the things I saw that people were posting about they shared the character like tagline posters that they made way back when that had like each of the main characters with like a caption that was like no curfew or license to drive or whatever and they made those for all of the original team members and they originally got featured in a Comic-Con video from back in 2010 that I saw when the show was first starting and they have been like my favorite concept art from the show forever. Nice. Like nice. if if for whatever reason Warner Brothers ever wanted to release a poster set for Young Justice, I would give them all the money for this series oh, of posters the cuz they're so <laughs> clever and they're so cute and it's like one, the, one nice. of them says, like, the Miss Martian ones, I don't know if they showed it at Comic-Con, but the Miss Martian one said Sweet 16 and had her jumping out of a cake and punching something in the face. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yes, I love this. I love all of this. More of <laughs> nice. this, please. Well, and that year at San Diego Comic-Con, I'd heard about Young Justice, like, through some rumors that they were doing this thing. But then I heard nothing. And then suddenly I just stumbled on the episodes as they aired in that November, I think. And then I watched those two episodes. I was like, this is cool. And then they just had this giant like delay again. (laughs) It was just like, what is happening? So they showed those and then they didn't do the like regular airing until like, I think right into the next year. So I was started off with a bang. Um, But they also announced that there would be 26 episodes. So same as season one. Yeah. If I remember correctly on the panel, they said they've got 10, they have 10 recorded, they have 10 more written at the time of the panel, and then they have six more that they have to even write. 
So they've got 10 recorded. That's fantastic. Then those start to go into animation and that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty convinced at this point, if they're doing 26 episode season, unless they're only going to release it in half season chunks at a time, they are not going to do a Netflix release like a big chunk. Otherwise, we're not getting it forever. It'll probably end up being like how they released the last season of Legend of Korra, where it was weekly, but it was only online. So they released it like every every Saturday morning or whatever it was, the new episode went yeah. up and they were all there, but right. it was weekly. Right. We have some returning characters that were confirmed, yes. which was pretty funny because I was sitting next to Cam and Eric when they actually put the concept art for Tim Drake. They had Arsenal up. They had the new Blue Beetle, who looks amazing. Yeah. They had Impulse's new costume, which kind of a mix between Impulse and Kid Flash, which is cool. They had Static. They had Wonder Girl, Beast Boy. Wonder Girl looks exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, uh, that Beast confused Boy. me a little bit when I saw it. I was like, everyone looks different. And they we haven't changed Wonder Girl at all. Wonder Girl is the same Not at haircut. All. She's like literally, literally the same, like, I don't know, like form, <laughs> like up there. Like, it's just like the same shot. We also got Artemis, Nightwing, Superboy, and who we all thought at first was Calder. Yeah. But I mean, I think I was asked like 25 <laughs> times, like, why is his hair not bleach blonde? Including by I was, me. I said, I know no everybody's message. first thing. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, maybe because they didn't say anything in the panel that it wasn't awkward. I mean, there was no reason to think that it was anybody else. Yeah. Even though he, I mean, he looked a little bit older for, I, I mean, my other thought was like, it's Mal, <laughs> which could have very yeah. much been yeah. right. But it turns out, it's Black Lightning, yeah. which in retrospect makes a lot of sense simply because the name of the series is Outsiders, and Black Lightning was one of the original characters from Batman and the Outsiders, which I'm assuming they're drawing this name from. So, um, you know, yeah. being, a, being a senior member of the League and a senior but not front runner, I guess, he, keeps show, he kept showing up in the seasons but he wasn't he was kind of more like league adjacent <laughs> they had to lay the groundwork for whatever role he's going to play in season three i guess yeah which i'm pretty stoked about he's also got a law he's got a, a live action series coming out too which looks really good where he's retired and they they're taking the modern take on him where he's got two daughters and both of the daughters i believe it might just be one but i think both of the daughters also have um powers yeah. and he comes out of retirement and sh they've got powers and stuff it looks like a really good show so i'm excited about that the only reason i know both of his daughters have powers is because they did uh black lightning and his daughter's little s shorts on dc nation back in the day <laughs> about oh about yeah that. you know what i don't think i don't think i've seen almost i don't think i've seen any of that dc nation those shorts oh, i really so need good. to like grab and they're so fun i know i, have I heard a they're really with, good i just have i have a t-shirt with the super best friends forever on it because i love them that much <laughs> they're the most i was like i would have paid money for a full series of the super best friends forever that was wonder girl Supergirl, and batgirl going on adventures together oh it sounds fantastic i love it but one of the things that we should note is that though all of the characters from season two got upgraded in costumes and stuff and look really cool, Artemis, Nightwing, Superboy, and Black Lightning, one of the reasons we didn't know it wasn't Calder was the fact that they're not in costume. They're yeah. all in yeah. black, like, like, stealth, you gear. know, special ops gear. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they don't even have like colors. They have none of their logos on. Artemis has like this like mask pulled up over her face you know, you can tell, I mean, supposedly, you could tell it's Nightwing because he's got, like, his Escrima stick sticking out of the back of his back, and Superboy looks pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> Except he's a little more dressed in black than he was before. Got slightly longer sleeves. Right, exactly, yeah. So, it's interesting to me. I'm interested in this because if they're, like, an undercover team, they continue to be an undercover team, that would be really, really cool. Because, once again, I don't think Superboy was ever outed in season two for not being part of the team, right? Nightwing is still, at least as far as Young Justice is concerned, is still kind of a secret ops agent, right? Artemis as well. Like, she retired. So, yeah. you know, and then when she came back, she was somebody else. So none of them have become public personalities. And like we said, Black Lightning, though he's present in several episodes, he still isn't part of really the league. He seems to be like this league adjacent, which makes me think that, He's a character like from the comics where he's dealing with more like street level, everyday crime kind of stuff and less the, you know, aliens attacking the universe, you know, whenever, unless the, the league needs to pull him in. So that's interesting. 
But then we got three new characters as well, yeah. and I had some major confusion here. Arrowette, I was super excited to see, because if you've obviously listened to the show, I talk about how the character of Arrowette was laid out in that Peter David episode way back, way back when, yes. in season one. So she's full grown now, so she's probably 18 or seven, maybe 16, 17, 18, which gives us a three to five year potential jump yeah. between season two and season three. We also got spoiler. Yeah, yeah, we did. We got stuff from. <laughs> I I was so excited for you when I saw that. I posted it on Twitter, and I feel like some people probably thought I was exaggerating, but I'm not. I screamed and jumped up and down when I saw it. I was I was alone, <laughs> so I didn't bother anyone in my house. But I like was just scrolling through my Twitter, and it's like, oh, there's uh, they got announced at Comic Con. Stephanie Brown's going to be in season right. three of Young Justice, and I'm like, oh my god, what? I jumped around <laughs> my house and shrieked. Like a five year old, like I was, I I am very excited for Stephanie Brown, guys. What was funny was, as I had posted, like you know, oh, we got a picture of Arrowette and a new character to the series, and spoiler, and somebody was like, "Is that literally the name of the character, or are you? Is that an actual spoiler that you can't tell us about?" And I was just like, "Oh no, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. No, it's her name is literally spoiler." It's the most confusing thing whenever you mention yeah, it, it casually. People make jokes about it. <laughs> Like, yeah, there's spoilers going to be in season three. The uh, the character that's new to the show is Tracy 13. And I didn't know anything about Tracy 13 when I first saw this. In fact, I was confused. When he had said 13 on the panel, I thought he was saying Arrowette was 13. And I was like, she's kind of tall, but okay. <laughs> Which means that there isn't much time jump between season two and three. And I like had this whole theory wrapping around. And then uh, some other people were like, no, dude, that's actually a character from the thing. And in, uh, I think it's the pre-52, maybe not pre-52, might be pre-rebirth, Tracy 13 is, she's she's a magical character whose father has, it's kind of like a Zatanna Zatara relationship, it seems like. I don't know that much about her. I'm interested to do some more research. She also is uh, Jaime's girlfriend at one point. And then I think after rebirth or at some point when they did a reboot, uh, of the DC universe, uh, Tracy 13 is no longer Jaime's girlfriend, and she's either bi or lesbian. I don't know for sure. So I don't know exactly what take they're going to take on her. It's possible they might introduce her as as uh, one of the LGBT characters if they're going to do something. But having said that, Greg and Brandon were both pretty pretty clear. They said, look, we, we can definitely do a little bit more mature themes in this because we don't have the same restrictions as Cartoon Network. They said, but the show is not going to change that much. Like, yeah. we have a few things, a few edges we had to file off. You know, things like Roy and Cheshire had to be married, where in the comics they were never married, right? Yeah. Stuff like that that they had to do for Cartoon Network, right? But they can maybe address some things a little more directly. Like, they implied that Roy became a drug addict between season one and season two, and Greg has basically said so <laughs> on, on Ask Greg. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Did you not I know, didn't that? know that? Well, because in the comics, in the comics, you know, Roy was a was a heroin addict at one point. And so so somebody had asked him on Ask Greg, they said, uh, "Hey, was his is his obsession with trying to find the original Roy and how terrible he looked and you know, all in his in his apartment being a mess and all this kind of stuff. Is that supposed to be analogous to his is that supposed to represent his uh his, you know, drug addiction in the comics?" And he said, "Oh, yeah, yeah. Also representing his actual drug addiction." <laughs> In the show. <laughs> like, oh, okay. All right. So we're going to be pretty clear about Go that. Go read right, Ask sweet. Greg, kiddos. It's fun. Yeah, and you'll learn of, some it's, stuff. It's pretty fun. So, I mean, that kind of stuff is coming up uh, as well. But, I mean, they, I, I think Greg's been pretty clear. He said, look, unless the, if, the, if the relationship is key to the story arc and what's going on, like with all the relationships they've had so far, um, he's just said, I'm not promising anything for you know, showing an, an LGBT character's relationship in a way that some people, I think, really want yeah. for season three. Maybe in season four, <laughs> but like I said, they haven't, they, they've made some changes. He said, he also said on the panel, which I thought was really interesting, he said there was a character, because they have so many characters, of course, and they're introducing some more, <laughs> some characters have to go into the background. And he said, there was a character that we had decided at the beginning, we were like, look, we're not going to emphasize them this season. That's fine, we'll just put them in the background or... 
you know, that kind of thing. And then maybe we'll pick them up in season four, that kind of thing. And he said, as they started developing the season and started writing episodes, this character just kept yelling at them like, no, I am not, not only am I not gone, I am like front and center in this season. So figure it out. It's the most and so, feeling. you know, it's so writery. Yeah. When the character is just telling you what to do, it's so, it's like frustrating and then finally satisfying if you just let it go and give in because they know what they're doing. With these three characters. new characters and with Arrowhead mm-hmm. in particular, I am so happy with her redesigned costume because anyone. Arrowhead? Who, yes. Because I, oh, I don't yeah. know, people listening at home, I don't know if you've ever seen what Arrowhead's costume looked yeah, like in the good. comics. <laughs> but you know how people made it's jokes not. about like Artemis's costume being impractical because it was a crop top? Look up Arouette, who decided the best way to be an archer was to wear a crop top, a mini skirt, and thigh high boots, and that's it. Yeah, because that's practical. Yeah. It's bad. It's terrible. <laughs> and I'm very happy with this redesign that keeps her logo and all the stuff yeah. that makes her Arouette and her color scheme. But was like, you know what's yeah. dumb? Mini skirt and thigh high boots is pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah, pretty dumb. Um, I do like too. I, I feel like it. It really echoed to Artemis's original yes. costume. Yeah, and because Artemis is. At least in this, you know, in this time jump in between, she was going to be Tigress or Huntress, whatever she was going to go by. You know, she's she's stepped out of the Archer role and now she's moving into this other thing. And now we just see her in this black, you know, special ops outfit. So she's just being her. So there's definitely this room, you know, to fill in. So that's great. So, yeah. So we'll see what happens with Tracy 13. I'm excited to see spoiler, um, which means we might get a whole season of spoiler before and then maybe in the following season she becomes Batgirl or maybe later in this season it's 26 episodes that's a lot we'll of story see. arc that they can put she's gotta, in. she's yeah. gotta be Robin in there for a hot second in the middle of all that maybe <laughs> I don't know I'm like I'm with uh, Pranks Paul on that one which is like I have mixed feelings about it she was just like she was like Robin for a hot second and then Fridge to make Tim more depressed oh and yeah then, no like, that I, was it. I it agree was just it really was, terribly handled it was not I like her as Robin and her justification yeah. behind being Robin and all that yep. How it was handled overall, I am a bit iffy on, but... I love the idea. I, I'd just be super excited about having a female Robin in the modern age as opposed to, you know, just in The Dark Knight Returns. But notab- notably absent in any of this is Ms. Martian. Yes. Sorry. Aqualad. Aqualad. Bad girl. Zatanna. Zatanna. Rocket. Yep. Mal. Bumblebee. Yep. Yeah. Lagoon Boy. Yep. A lot of people... Right. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? And that's perfectly fine. People are like, oh my God, why didn't they show blah, blah, blah? What happened to Miss Martian? Is she dead? It's just like, oh my goodness, guys. I appreciate that was my the gut excitement. Reaction I, really too, I mean, this is, I know, I know, I know. I appreciate the fandom. I really, really do. They just showed us a few characters. Like, they weren't even going to show us that. Yeah. You know, like, they were like, they were like, here are the, here are the, the season two characters upgraded. I don't remember when that. That Robin design first went up. Some people were really confused because Robin has a hood now. And people are like, is it Damien? Is it Tim? Is it Damien? Do we know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to say it's probably Tim. But no, nah, it's definitely Tim. It's definitely Tim. And I'm OK. I'm OK with that. I just want I want to see what they do with Tim as a character moving forward. Yeah. I don't want him to be Damien. I, I just Tim should be more. I just want Tim to be more like. Let Tim live. Intelligence. Intelligence and hope i want him to be that positive character that he just spiraled out of in the comics like he really i just want him to be one of the positive ones like the if jason comes back and he's doing red hood and and we get damien as well it's gonna be like there are way too many emo robins out here we need something we need we need a we need spoiler we need something else we need spoiler absolutely that's a good call good call Speaking of spoiler, I do want to mention, just yeah. because we were talking about Arrowet and Tracy 13 and spoiler and everybody, yeah. because this is what I do on this podcast, their relationships in the comics, throwing this out there, Arrowet, I believe, was Impulse's love interest for a little bit, talked about how Tracy oh, yeah. 13 was uh, Blue Beetles, and spoiler dated Tim Drake for a while, and then they broke up, and then I think they got back together at one point, maybe, possibly. So we'll see if any yeah. of that gets brought in. Just wanted to throw that all out there for people to think about and theorize yeah. as they see fit. Yeah, and the other thing, just to plant a seed about the Tracy 13 Jaime thing too, like, I mean, Greg has said, he's made it pretty clear that some of the, I mean, the most recent comics, meaning like the stuff that's happened over the last maybe three or four yeah. years, um, for those of us who are old, um, the most recent comics over the last three or four years, he's not as familiar with as the previous 70 years yes. of comics. And so... 
my guess is that Tracy and Jaime are going to be a couple because Tracy uh, Jaime just had such a major role in the previous season. Yeah. I think they're going to want to move like his life forward and then introducing Tracy 13 being a magical character who could also say help to help him with the scarab should it go crazy, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing. And then you know, the only thing I'm concerned about is that if we have Tracy 13 and she is this magical character, she may be very different than Zatanna. I don't know, but I, because I haven't done the research, but we have this other magical girl character. Um, I'm wondering if she's going to kind of fill that Zatanna role now that Zatanna is going to be 10 years older than the first season or whatnot and have be a full member of the league. Is she going to step in and be like Zatanna's role in the team, just like Arrowette's kind of filling in yeah. Artemis's role in the team, which would be, Pretty cool, but um, you know, it's always tough when you're writing to make sure that you're not Rehashing. in gaming. We call it, yeah, we call it niche protection in gaming. Like, if if I have a set of skills that I'm using for the team in a role playing game, and another person has my exact set of skills or has all of their skills, and then also is better than me at one of my skills, it just makes it unsatisfying. And same thing for writing characters in a book too. Like, if you have if you have two characters that are fulfilling the same role. And doing the exact same thing, why do you have them? Like, it's irrele- you need to, like, mash them together, cut one of them out, do something. You can't have an adventuring party that's five rogues. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You can, you can. in some games what? because there's enough, you know, archetypes to fill out. And it could be an interesting game, but you have to walk into it that yeah. way. If you have a – it's more of a problem if you have a rogue – who is, you know, someone who's like a tomb raider who's good at finding traps and like, you know, that kind of thing. You know, like a Laura Croft, Indiana Jones kind of character. You have one of those, but then you also have a wizard who can throw massive fireballs and destroy giants with lightning called from the sky who can just cast a quick spell to detect all the traps in a building. <laughs> yeah, it's a little unsatisfying for the yeah. tomb raider guy, you know? So, anyway. So we already touched on Greg and Brandon saying the season was going to be a bit more mature. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. What else do you got here? Uh, we were talking a bit about the possibility of a time skip because we'll see how that goes. There's definitely a time skip. Yeah. I'm- I, it, three to five years is now my guess. I was thinking two to three, but I'm, I'm just thinking it's probably going to be more like three to five. The one thing with that, I feel like we can never fully judge based on concept art simply because yeah. a thing I've noticed with all of the characters, and especially with the female characters, they all look quite a bit older than they're meant to be in the show sometimes. Because I was looking at the YJ wiki uh, when Steph Brown got announced. In season two, when she shows up, her official age on the YJ wiki is that she's 12. And that's not what a 12-year-old looks oh. like at all. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, <laughs> no, she definitely looked more like 15, 16. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, I but would think. Yeah. So that's why oh, when they released art and you, uh, when you would put something up where you were, where you said that Arrowette was thirteen, I was like, that's not what a thirteen year old looks like. But okay, Young Justice, I'll go with it. Uh, yeah. And of course, that we then later realized that that was a bit. We were all a bit confused. But I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to be. We shall see. What's up with that? Yeah, we're going to have to wait. And, and me see. being me, I am, of course, automatically nervous when the phrase time skip comes up <laughs> just because. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Season two. But uh, but I'm willing to put <laughs> that aside. I'm willing to trust hurt. the creators. I'm willing to go with it. But we know the first time skip caused me emotional trauma for a little bit there. So <laughs> I'm just going to be like. And you aren't the only one. You aren't the only one for sure. Like, can we stay with but... these characters for five minutes? <laughs> Please. We got 20 episodes, and we're going to get 26 episodes of this one. I know, so. I know. Plus, we'll get more comics. Please. Yeah. Seriously, I don't know. Guys, we'll see. Go buy YJ Comics on Comixology. <laughs> totally. I'm less concerned about this time skip than I am about the implications that if we get a season four, five, and six, yes. if they keep doing five-year time skips, then we're going to roll right out of Nightwing completely. Yeah. Like, Batman is going to have died in old age i don't know are they going to roll into the batman beyond universe and you know go with terry mcginnis and like you yeah. know that kind of thing like maybe i mean superboy he says that he's aging internally <laughs> but superman ages incredibly slowly as yeah. it is so he may look 16 for 200 years and then die 
So I don't know. You know, you never know. And with that and with season four, season five, season however long this goes and the fact that they'd start rolling through characters, one thing that always comes to mind when this stuff comes up is because I have taken theater classes. We talk about this type of thing about how when you compare movies to TV to theater, movies Mm -hmm. are about plot, theater is about ideas, and television is about characters. You come back to a TV show week after week because you care about the characters more than anything else in theory. So the idea of rolling through your entire original cast of characters and having a completely new set of characters worries me on some level just because I'm attached to people from season one. But That's really interesting because to me, um, I think that's just an American thing. (laughs) No joke. Like if you watch a sh- if you watch a- some British TV, which tends to have much much shorter seasons, yes. like their series are like six to ten, eleven episodes yes. at the most. Like a long series for them is is thirteen episodes. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, to yeah. us, that's like Cora, you know, crazy short. If you watch a show like MI Five, which is a fantastic show, spoiler, pretty much at the end of every series, somebody's gone. They, yeah. They've left, they've been outed as an agent, they've died. By the time you get to series seven, eight, you are, there's no familiar faces. By the time you get to like series four or five, it's an entirely different team because one at a time, the team from series one have all been, have all been booted. Yeah. And that's the thing that's interesting about British TV is they have such a short period of time and series are so tightly self-contained, man, you don't know who's going to snuff it. Somebody's gonna die, and and in American TV, you're like, no, they won't do that. They need five seasons of Superboy being angst ridden and angry, right? Yeah. But in British TV, they're like, oh no, what's the most terrible dramatic thing that we could do? <laughs> okay, let's have this character sacrifice his life for this other character. And since it's British TV, you're actually on the edge of your seat if you like the character because you're if they yeah. die, they're yeah. gonna be dead. They're not coming back in some mysterious you know, magical event. But whatever. also that's again, so. it's a different format because it's a shorter series. Things end up being different and whatnot. It's it's a weird format. It's like comparing a, an hour long drama of a 24 episode season with like a soap opera. It's like different formats yield different that's things. Fair. But as a general thing, just wanted to share that just because these are always my worries when Sure. Things are like things are changing on Young Justice. My fan yeah. mind immediately goes to Dear God, no. <laughs> they're definitely they're definitely doing something different with Young Justice across the board, yeah. and this is one of the different things they're doing, which are these timestamps and actual time moving forward. and And since it's new, it's a weird thing. We don't see that very often. It's it's everywhere used to this um, weird time lock that TV shows find themselves in. You know, I'm fascinated. I I like it, but um, definitely weird. All right, so let's let's do, let's move on to some upcoming stuff. Yeah, let's go on talk about that. So what you what do you got coming up for the show? Well, we have the next Super Sweethearts because people really like that first one. Apparently, I did not realize this would be so widely and happily received by so many people, which has been nice. <laughs> I loved it. I've listened to it multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes, everybody's been super super nice about that, and we put up a. A poll asking people what they wanted to hear next, and the consensus was, as I assumed it would be, Spitfire. Uh, <laughs> over for a second there, I thought Shallant was going to take it away, though. Shallant was trying. Shallant was really trying, but Spitfire ended up with over fifty percent of the votes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Fine. Um, but yes, so the next episode will be about Wally and Artemis talking about them, and with some awesome input from some of our Patreon supporters who left questions on a post we left up over there about what they wanted to hear me talk about specifically for this episode. That will be coming soon. I'm aiming to record by the end of this month before I go back to school so that things are easier. And I've been working on the outline right now. (laughs) So hopefully you guys will be able to hear it soon. And hopefully you guys will like it as much as the first episode because you guys were all super nice. So thanks. Thanks for liking the stuff I make. (laughs) <laughs> it was fantastic. You got you got music. Neil gave you music. I never got music. When Neil sent that to us, I was like, "What? What am I? Oh, that's in the recording." Neil's just adding acoustic guitar. Neil's just making everything sound fabulous. <laughs> okay, because hashtag Neil is magic. <laughs> um, also, as I mentioned earlier, we'll get on this Kid Flash secret origin. I'm going to apologize for 
to everyone for the delay in this. He's always late. That's all I have to say. <laughs> but in addition to that, now that I, now that uh, my kids and everybody is going back to school and I have some more time, I'll be able to do the Secret Origin for Kid Flash. We're also going to finish out season one. So we'll do uh, one for Zatanna. We'll do one for Rocket. And we'll do one for uh, the Roy, you know, Red Arrow. Now that we've gotten into season two and that kind of stuff, I'll just cover all the Roy's all together and maybe even a little mini bit on Guardian, even though in the comics he's not actually uh, a clone of Roy. And then um, uh, and then we'll start moving into season two with Secret Origins. So we'll do the base team there in season two and we'll just keep going with that as well. And then the other big thing we've mentioned a few times, but I will mention it again because people are still asking me if I'm going to Gen Con, which is so weird to me. Neil and I will both be at Gen Con. That's in Indianapolis, Indiana. And you can come see us. You do not have to buy a ticket to Gen Con to come see us. Uh, We will be at the JW Marriott in Indianapolis, Indiana on Saturday. That's this coming Saturday. The One Shot Podcast Network, which is uh, has Cat Cool and James D'Amato. James, you've heard on our uh, on our show in our discussion episodes, as well as Pranks Paul, who's also been on our show uh, talking about Bat Dad. Um, he's going to be there as well, along with a lot of our other guests, discussion episode guests. Uh, Darcy Ross will be there. Ishan Sherwin will be there. There'll be a lot of people there. So um, the One Shot Podcast Network is hosting this event, and I am honored to say that, well, the Young Justice Files is a, an, is a special guest of them there, as well as Aram Varshin from the God's Fall podcast, which is fantastic. So it will be in the Trevi Marzio room on Saturday night, this Saturday night from 8 p.m. to midnight. So I'm trying to think who else is going to be there. Oh, Jeff Stormer from Party of One, who also gave us our fantastic kind of Apocalypse New Genesis 101 class, yeah. which was fantastic. Quinn Wilson from our linguistics episode is going to be there, as well as his brother, Natai, who is the actual linguist he referenced in the show. Um, As I mentioned, uh, Darcy Ross will hopefully be there, and I'm really, really hoping that Brendan Conway from the creator of Masks will be there as well. Plus just a a ridiculous number of other podcasts and RPG industry guests are going to be there. So even if you're not attending Gen Con, but you will be in Indianapolis, you can absolutely come by. Do not need a ticket. Nothing else. Just walk into the JW Marriott, ask where the Trevi Marzio room is, come by, say hi. We would love to see you. Yeah. I I wish I was going. I wish I could meet people, but I'm not. We wish you were coming too. We'll try and get another year. Video chat me into random things. I may. You you think (laughs) I'm not going to try and do that? I'm totally doing that. All right. So let's get on to our reviews and Patreon backers and then see if we have anything else to announce. So we have some new Patreon backers. Thank you so much. Rachel Dedino. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, right. Rachel is uh, our new Alpha Squad member. Ashley Little is a new Beta Squad member. Doyce Testerman is our new Delta Squad member. And Kaylee? Kylie? K-A-Y-L-L-E? Let me know if I'm mangling your name. Sorry. Uh, Is one of our new Gamma Squad members as well. And even if you're not on Patreon, you should really check out our Patreon page every now and then. There's extra content, as we mentioned earlier. This week... On August 17th, the edited break (laughs) that Neil edited up from our mask session goes up. It's about seven or eight minutes, I think, and it's it's pretty funny. Um, We were all like super excited and eating. You can hear me being incredibly rude. (laughs) I was like talking with my mouth. We all needed a snack break. I know. I was so hungry and so excited. I'm just going to apologize to everybody (laughs) ahead of time for that craziness. Uh, Anyway, as well as Emily's ClarkCon... 2017 panel on teen superhero teams also uh, airs to the public on the 17th. So you can get plenty of uh, Emily and us this week, even though we don't have episodes airing. Uh, You can already get the masks versions of Superboy, Miss Martian, Robin, KF, and Calder that Brendan created uh, for our actual play. You can get the pregame letters that Brendan wrote for us for our adventure. Which are so cute. Oh, I know. They're really cool. And the San Diego Comic-Con 2017 special that had Cam and Eric we referenced earlier is also currently now available. You can go listen to that. Last thing related to the Patreons, Neil ran our first quarterly superhero RPG for Patreon backers. Uh, It was run by Neil. Emily was in it. We had three of our backers in it. And we had special guest Cam Bowen in it as well. I didn't get to see it. (laughs) I haven't heard it yet. You just you just popped in for a hot second and then popped out to say hi. Uh, I did, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. I don't want something depressing was happening too. I don't know what was happening, but like I don't remember because I so much and... depressing stuff happened. I'm not sure. I don't when know you what popped in. 
Nice. Neil, I, I don't know what Neil was saying, but he was like, and everyone is in doom and crying and <laughs> darkness. Oh, look, Rich popped in. <laughs> Hi, Rich. We're all sad. Hi, Rich. Uh, yeah, like, hey, it's nice to see yeah. you. Okay, back to the back to the depression. Yeah. Without without yeah. spoiling too much of the plot for anybody who's eventually gonna maybe listen to it if that goes out anywhere. We had a we had a bit of a fun time with some plummets into depression for a little bit there for a bit. <laughs> uh I I apologize to anyone who has to listen to it because in, by the, like the last half hour it was super late in my time zone and I was very tired and I multiple times forgot what I was doing. Neil was like, okay, and Emily, what do you do? I'm like, I had a plan and I literally just don't remember it anymore. Sorry, give me a minute to flip through it's my It's the magic of sheet. editing. Magic of editing. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> we shall see. But uh, that was that's fun. I think me. I posted on Twitter about it that my catchphrase accidentally became, I'm going to try something stupid because that was my approach <laughs> to every situation. Be like, nice. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then be like, Emily, what do you do? I'm like, I'm going to try something stupid. I've got this move that does a thing. <laughs> We're going to try it. <laughs> nice. You were playing a delinquent playbook I character, was, right? Which is hilariously ironic and probably shows through in the thing that I don't know how to be a delinquent in real life because it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I follow the rules, guys. And Hilarious. then it's like, you're a character who does nothing but break the rules. I'm like, late night parties and no curfew. That's all and I you got. Were, guys. You were a cliche. You were a cl- cliche. Cliche. Oh, I was the most. Fun I love cliche. it. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, uh, yeah. But we we started off. We started at a crazy late night party in game, and then it went from there. And we had to nice. go do some crazy stuff. Some of our drama unfolded in a late night diner at one point. <laughs> Nice. We'll have fun with that. Uh, well, we're definitely going to get that posted up, but I, I think the players decided that it, it was in the Young Justice universe, uh, yes. but you were not playing yes, Young Justice characters. You were playing original characters that were tied to the DC Comics universe, which yes. I am fascinated to hear. That sounds awesome. Yes. And then uh, we'll, we'll we'll post a little bit more about that when Neil gets uh, when Neil gets around to getting that edited and cleaned up. I don't know if we'll have it with the same detail as. Um, things like, you know, all the crazy music and the special effects and everything that he had in the background for these games. But we'll definitely get it uh, cleaned up like a normal, regular, actual play and uh, and let people uh, yeah. listen. You no, know, we'll hopefully <clears throat> cut out the part where I was so focused on story that I kind of zoned out and just started tapping my microphone. Neil had to be like, oh, Emily, nice. Emily, stop. I'm like, what? He's like, you're making noise. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Nice. I apologize. I'm just so focused on what the shadow is saying about things that I don't even remember what I'm doing. <laughs> nice. All right. And then we have a couple of new reviews. One of them was a review we were going to talk about last time, but it was long and we had a lot of reviews last time. <laughs> and this one was from Hope uh, at Peach Idiot on Twitter. And it just says, Wow. Uh, This podcast is amazing. Growing up, I loved Young Justice. I was around 11 or 12 when it came out, and sadly, I didn't have uh, friends who watched the show. So I suffered through the cancellation with unknown strangers on the internet. So thank you, Rich, Caleb, Emily, and anyone else I forgot to mention uh, for providing an entertaining, engaging, hilarious, deep analysis of this amazing show. It provides a unique cast of people with different nerdy backgrounds, such as the tabletop gaming and creative writing uh, to delve into, such as tabletop gaming and creative writing, to delve into a well-written and clever show. I've been re-watching this show along with listening, and this podcast tied together some of my questions about how the about the show and provided a better understanding. This podcast creatively has an episode divided into different segments that explain the plot, why the episode was good, explains why the writing is amazing, how this episode works into the overarching plot of the show. It's a cleverly thought out, cleverly thought out podcast. And I believe it is a critical part of the Young Justice experience. Oh, thanks. I cannot recommend it enough. I'm excited to see how Whelmed analyses uh, analyzes season two, and I can't wait to be able to explore season three with this podcast. Oh, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Peach idiot. (laughs) Can't. I just feel bad saying it. Like, thank you, Hope. Yeah. Thank you so much. Our next review is from Sing Seraphim. Uh, and is just titled, You Can Tell How Much Love Goes Into This. 
and they say, it is really a pleasure to listen to people talk about what they care about. Young Justice is one of my favorite shows, but I never picked up on all the fascinating tiny details that get pointed out in the podcast. You are all so heckin' rad. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, If I knew you guys in real life, I would want to be friends with you. I hope you know that fans really appreciate the labor of love that this is. Also, Emily, I too cannot bring myself to like Lagoon Boy. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) After I listened to the last few episodes of the podcast, I went back and watched the last few episodes of the show, thinking, surely it wasn't as bad as all that. But no, it was. (laughs) And I think I might actually hate him. I really want to like him, but I just can't. Hopefully, he'll get some sort of development in season three that will give him some redeeming qualities. I hope so, too. Uh, keep up the yes. good work, you guys. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for Thanks liking so. what we do. And I'm, <laughs> Thanks so much. Guys, I'm sorry for all the Lagoon Boy hate. Like, if you like him, more power to you. I just, I have my opinions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And our last one is from KGirl212121. Real straightforward. Says, love you guys. And glad I finally found something to channel my Young Justice obsession into. Yes. Clear and very straightforward. That's all you I need. love it. So it's uh it's what we need. And it makes us feel great. Yes. Thank you so much, K Girl. Twenty one twenty one twenty one. Or two one two one two one. Whichever or two, one you prefer. 1212 12, one. Yeah. I don't know. Whichever you number to. sequence you prefer. Thank you to all of them. All right, guys. So uh, that wraps up our Intel update for the moment. So um, again, if you're in the Indianapolis area, come by and see Neil and I over the weekend. Make sure to pop over to the Patreon to check out some of the other stuff that's coming up, posting on the 17th, which should be Thursday, should be available. Um, So if you pop over on your Friday regular listen, it should be up for you, no problem. And uh, remember, if you enjoy our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. Uh, You can also support us by giving us a five-star review that we will obviously read on the air. Um, Sharing it with a friend is one of the best ways to help our show grow. Five-star reviews are great as well. We just, uh, makes us feel so good. And it's nice to hear from the audience that we don't see um, what they like about the show. Absolutely. Um, If you do leave us a rating, though, please let us know. I, I have a few things set up to get us most of the reviews from several of the major countries that have been leaving reviews anyway. But if you're outside of the United States, definitely, definitely let us know that you've left a review. Or if you're doing a non iTunes review, let us know about that, too. I'd appreciate that. And that about wraps it up. Yeah. I think. All right. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Stay whelmed, everybody. Stay well. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Stay whelmed, everybody. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed.